In today's video, I've got six easy and delicious recipes that are also budget friendly. Hi everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin, and today I have six easy and delicious recipes that I recently tried for my family. They were a huge hit, so I'm excited to share them with you here today. Best of all, they are very budget friendly. So if you, like me, have noticed prices really going up at the grocery store, hopefully these are going to help you out and give you some fresh ideas to switch up your meal planning, things that your family I know is going to love too and that won't break the bank. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that today's video is a collaboration with my good friend Jennifer over at The Daily Connoisseur. Jennifer has a YouTube channel called The Daily Connoisseur, a blog by the same name, and she is the New York Times best-selling author of the Madame Chic book series and others. So I will have her video linked down in the description box with information on how to find her. We have become great friends on YouTube, and this is the third video in a series Series that we've done giving you six recipes. So if you haven't seen those, I will have those in the description box as well. Jennifer and I share a lot of similar content, plus she is the creator of the 10 item wardrobe, which if you followed me for any length of time, you know I love. <laughs> so definitely check out Jennifer's video after you watch mine. Let her know that I sent you in her comment section. And if you are coming over from Jennifer's channel, I want to give you a warm welcome. I really hope you like what you see here at Faith and Flower and that you'll consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join our community. Thank you guys for joining us today and also don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like today's video because that will let us know to make more. Let's get into it. First up, tachos coming in at $2.15 per serving. This is a twist on nachos using tater tots instead of tortilla chips as the base. Check out the description box to find links for all the recipes in today's video, and I will also have a price breakdown of each ingredient for you there as well. Bake the tater tots at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes until they're nice and crispy. Brown a pound of ground beef over medium heat for about six minutes and then drain the fat. While the meat is cooking, prepare the other ingredients. So I used one can of black beans drained. I whipped up some guacamole. You can also use store-bought or just sliced avocados. I also am using a Mexican cheese combination that is pre-shredded, some cherry tomatoes that I quartered, and some sour cream for topping. I almost forgot the jalapenos. If your family likes heat, then you can use fresh, or if they prefer mild, these pickled jalapenos are great. When the meat is cooked through and is no longer pink, add taco seasoning. Then add the black beans, stir, and just cook until the beans are warmed through. Top the tater tots with the beef and bean mixture, jalapenos, tomatoes, and the cheese. Bake for about 10 minutes until it's warmed through and the cheese is all melty and bubbly. Then top with sour cream, guacamole, cilantro, and all of your family's favorite nacho toppings. If you've ever had loaded french fries, I would say this is a really over-the-top Mexican version. So definitely give tachos a try if your family is a fan of nachos and tater tots. This next recipe is for Tuscan butter gnocchi, and it comes in at $3.03 .03 per serving, which is the most expensive recipe I'm going to show you in today's video. When thinking about meals for this video, I wanted to show you some things that were a little bit out of the box. Instead of traditional pasta, which we often think about when we think of budget meals, gnocchi is pasta that is made with potato. So it's a fun switch out, and my family really enjoys it. It's also quite budget friendly. 
Start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then in a large skillet over medium heat, melt some butter, add garlic, and cook until fragrant for about a minute. Then add in your cherry tomatoes and season with oregano, salt, pepper, and a pinch of red pepper flakes. Cook until the tomatoes are beginning to burst, then add the spinach and cook it until it begins to wilt. I cook my spinach in batches using about half in the beginning and letting that wilt down and then I add the rest so that I don't have it overflow the pan. Once the spinach is wilted, stir in some chicken broth, heavy cream, grated Parmesan cheese, and some chopped herbs. I used fresh basil and bring to a simmer. Then you can reduce the heat to low and simmer until the sauce is slightly reduced for about three minutes. Add the gnocchi to the sauce and toss to coat. Use your spatula to break apart any gnocchi that are stuck together and just make sure everything's well incorporated. Then pour it into a nine by 13 inch baking pan and top with mozzarella cheese. Bake for 30 minutes or until the gnocchi is cooked through and the cheese is melty. This dish is so creamy and satisfying. I think your family is going to really love the burst of fresh flavor from the tomatoes and the spinach. It's a great alternative to lasagna and is very budget friendly. Sausage ragu over creamy grits costs just $1.87 per serving. This recipe calls for three sweet Italian sausages removed from their casings, some olive oil, garlic, chopped onion, about half a jar of a pasta sauce of your choice, some parsley, I didn't have fresh, so I used some dry, and then of course grits and some Parmesan cheese. Grits, just like polenta, are ground corn, only usually it's white corn and it's a little bit coarser in texture. I am from the American Southeast where grits are a traditional staple. So I love using them in this recipe. Again, it's a fun and delicious change from pasta and grits are probably even more economical. One cup of grits serves four people and that only costs 72 cents at my local grocery store. To start this recipe, heat a large skillet over medium high heat, add the sausage removed from their casings, and saute for about six minutes, stirring to crumble. The instructions say to remove the sausage from the pan, drain it, wipe the pan clean, and return to medium high heat, then add the onions to the pan. But I skipped all of that and just added the onion right in and sauteed for an additional four minutes. Once the sausage was cooked through and started to brown and the onions were nice and tender, I added in a little garlic and sauteed for an additional minute. Then I stirred in the pasta sauce and a third cup of water. Bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat and simmer for 20 minutes. In hindsight, I would have doubled this recipe and used the entire jar of pasta sauce along with all five links of the sausage that came in the package I bought. It would be so easy to freeze half of this for a future meal and use that on a busy weeknight. The instructions for this recipe call for polenta, so my instructions for making grits are just a little bit different. You can basically just follow the recipe that's on the package. All you have to do is boil some water, add a little salt to it, and then once it's at a rolling boil, you pour in the grits and sort of whisk them in. Then you lower the heat, cover it, and it takes about five to seven minutes for the grits to be finished. Once the grits are ready, turn off the heat and then stir in the cheese and a little pepper to taste. Mm -hmm. 
Serve the cheese grits topped with a sausage ragu mixture and sprinkle on a little bit of fresh parsley if you have it on hand. My family loved this so much, I was wishing right away that I had gone ahead and doubled the recipe so that I could freeze some for later, but this recipe is easy to throw together on a busy weeknight. This combination of the creamy cheese grits topped with this sauce that is just packed with flavor was really satisfying. This recipe is a meal in and of itself, but you could also serve it along with a little side salad. Next up is Korean ground beef bowls, and this only costs $2.05 per serving. I like to start by getting my rice going in the Instant Pot. I always make rice this way because it is foolproof. It's so easy, and once I get it going, I don't even have to think about it. You just need equal parts rice and water, so as much or as little as you'd like to make. I'm using brown rice tonight, so I'm going to set my Instant Pot on the pressure mode for 10 minutes. If I were using a white rice like jasmine, I would set it for four minutes. Heat a large skillet over medium heat, add the beef and cook, stirring and crumbling into small pieces until it's browned, which takes about five to seven minutes. Add garlic, ginger, and sesame oil, stirring until fragrant, which takes about two minutes. Then stir in soy sauce or coconut aminos, whichever you prefer, brown sugar, and red pepper. Cook until some of the sauce absorbs into the beef, which takes about seven minutes. Stir in half of the chopped green onions and save the rest for topping. Serve the beef over hot cooked rice and then garnish with the remaining green onions and if you have them on hand, sesame seeds. This was delicious all by itself, but I think it would also be great topped with some stir fried vegetables or even a fried egg. Pork tenderloin with mushroom sauce is only $1.85 per serving. I didn't realize that pork tenderloin was so economical. And this dish is so elegant. This would be one you'd be proud to serve your guests. Pour a little olive oil in the bottom of a roasting pan and add the pork. Then season it well with salt and pepper on all sides and turn the pork in the oil to make sure that it's coated. Roast the pork at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I really like to use a meat thermometer for this. Insert it into the thickest portion of the pork and you'll know it's ready when it reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit. While the pork is roasting, I start preparing the mushrooms for the sauce. When the pork is ready, you can set it aside and let it rest while you're making the sauce in the roasting pan. Place the roasting pan over medium high heat and add olive oil. Add the mushrooms and saute for about four minutes. Then add the garlic sauteing for an additional minute, stirring constantly. The instructions say to deglaze the pan with the vinegar, bringing it to a boil and scraping the pan to loosen up the brown bits. I got a little ahead of myself and added some of the broth before I realized it, but it all worked out. I just added the broth, scraped up the brown bits on the bottom, and reduced the sauce. Once the liquid was reduced to about a third of a cup, I added in the mustard and stirred in the sour cream, or you could also use creme fraiche. Cut the pork crosswise into slices and serve topped with a mushroom sauce. I served it along with grits once again to soak up all of that delicious sauce and a side salad. This is perfect for any special occasion and you don't have to break the bank to do it. The last recipe for today is Instant Pot King Ranch Chicken at just $1.64 per serving.
Although it's really hard to pick favorites out of these six recipes, I think this one is mine. King Ranch Chicken is a Texas favorite. I've had it before, but I've never made it at home. I did not know that it was this easy, especially when you make it in the Instant Pot. Start by adding chicken broth, onions, and the chicken to the Instant Pot. You can even use frozen chicken in this recipe if you forgot to thaw your chicken, and it comes out great. This dish is packed with flavor from the spices. You'll use cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, oregano, and salt. Sprinkle that all over the chicken in the Instant Pot. Pour one can of diced tomatoes and green chilies over the chicken. This is otherwise known as Rotel, and I really like the fire roasted type. Cover the Instant Pot and secure the lid. Make sure the valve is set to sealing. Set the manual pressure cook button to 12 minutes for small chicken breast, 15 for large, and if they're frozen, just add three minutes to each of the times. While everything's cooking in the Instant Pot, I prepare some of the ingredients that are going to go in at the end, like the soft tortillas. You need to cut these into about one inch size pieces. Mix two tablespoons of cornstarch into a cup of half and half. This you're going to add to the sauce to thicken it up. It makes it so rich and creamy. When the time is up, let the pot sit for five minutes and then move the valve to venting. Then you can remove the lid. Place the chicken on a cutting board and shred or dice into pieces. You can use your stand mixer to speed up this process, but I prefer a chunkier chicken in this recipe. I don't want it to be too finely shred, so I like to do it by hand. Add the chicken back to the Instant Pot along with the bell pepper. Then turn the Instant Pot to the saute setting. Stir in the half and half and cornstarch mixture, and it should thicken up very quickly. Once the sauce is boiling and it starts to really thicken up, add in the tortillas and the cheese. Stir well, season with salt and pepper to taste, and then serve topped with some fresh cilantro. This is so good. I hope that you'll give it a try and that your family loves it as much as mine does. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. I hope it gave you some fresh new ideas for recipes that will work with your budget. Don't leave without finding the link for Jennifer's video down in the description box and make sure you leave her a comment telling her I sent you. And don't forget to subscribe. It's easy and absolutely free. All you have to do is click on my picture. Thank you for spending time with me here today. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and the next video. Have a wonderful week.